What's up guys? Thanks so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah and let's recap and review Hulu's newest reality show, The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Is it The Secret of Mormon Wives? I think it is The Secret of or I don't know. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mormon wives, mom talk. Let's get into it. Episode two, it opens up and pretty much confirms what I was talking about in episode one when I did my review where I was like, they had to have taken a break because when we last saw Taylor, she was skinny and 28 and not pregnant. Now we open up this um, episode, they give us a cue card and it's been 11 months since Taylor's arrest and she is now 29 and big and pregnant. I said, so what didn't happen here? And I wonder why they took a break. Like, I'm like, y'all couldn't film while she was going through the process of you know, probation, getting charged. Maybe she said, hey, I'm not doing that. Or, um, and they feel like Taylor is such an integral part of the show that they were like, okay, we won't film this process. We'll come back in a, um, in like almost a year. But I was just wondering why they didn't keep filming. I feel like that would be more entertaining, but hey, who knows? So we see Taylor, she's sitting um, in the car. She goes and she picks up her mom while she's driving we end up seeing her in the confessional and production is like so what happened because last time we saw you you wasn't pregnant so 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 what happened <laughs> and she basically says that during the whole arrest and you know probation and all of that stuff her and Dakota never really broke up basically they were on again off again or in a situation ship and they were still messing around so she got pregnant and you know, we, we know she let us know on episode one, she had a miscarriage. And most of the time when women get pregnant again, after having a miscarriage, they're more likely to keep the baby. But after figuring out who Dakota is and what he was before girl, I would have drove myself from Utah to California. Okay. Utah to, cause I'm not doing it. I'm not going to be stuck with you for the rest of my life. I'm just, I'm, I'm not. I'm just, I'm, I wouldn't do it. If I was her, I wouldn't have did it. So she's just like, yeah, it, it's been a lot. We end up seeing her actually pick up her mom. You can tell the mom has lost some weight as well. And they're in the car. And the mom basically tells um, Taylor, I can't keep doing this with you. I hope you got your life together because you done aged me about 10 years. And even though I think both Taylor's um, parents are like hilariously blunt and rude, Again, y'all give your daughter some type of compassion. Okay. Just a little, just a little, little bit of warmness and compassion. Cause I, like I said, I, you could tell that her mom and dad are like hard asses and they're very blunt with her, but she's not the type of person that can probably take that. She's cause she is just like, yeah, you know, and she ends up explaining how the arrest woke her up. And it was so much going on that like she had like a mental break, like with the swinging scandal with, um, you know, her divorce. And then everything kind of came crashing down for her when someone actually recorded her walking out of the police department after her arrest. So she just she had to disconnect from everything and everyone. So they end up like going to this cute little baby store and they're in the parking lot and she just starts crying and that's when she explains about how having the mental break and how she's just like in therapy. And I said, I'm glad you in therapy. She realized that like she holds things in and like she needs to learn how to express them more. And I'm like, that is probably due to her environment because like I said, her parents are blunt and they're hilarious, but I'm like having the energy that they have like now it's, it's understandable, but when you're younger, you, you, sometimes some people can't handle that. Like some people don't have like thick skin in order to handle like the harsh truths of reality. And Taylor doesn't seem like the person that has that. So she's crying. Her mom is just looking at her. Like, she don't know what to like to touch her. Like she slightly like taps her on the shoulder. <laughs> But I think she was just taken aback by her display of emotion. And I'm guessing Taylor has never really like cried in front of her family or had this vulnerable type of moment. And so 
she's like, you know, I'm going to get my life together. Like me and Dakota are trying to be together, but like she keeps pushing him away. And she is like telling her mom that he keeps saying that because I'm doing that, it's going to make him run away. And she doesn't want to be a single mother raising, you know, three kids. But I mean, technically she's not a single mother, but she is. But if she still has like 50, 50 custody with her um, ex-husband, then I'm like, you kind of got like a trade off, you you know, you'll be a single mother with one kid if you don't want to take the uh, take that one with his two kids. But um she's just like, yeah, she starts crying in the confessional where she just says she doesn't think she deserves like a happy ending after all of the bad things she's done. And honestly, I felt bad for her because nothing she really did was that bad. Like, should she be swinging? I mean, if if it's all consensual, then it's not that big of a deal, but because it's taboo in her community, it's seen as like, no, but also she's a mom. And when we deal with moms and sexuality, everyone gets weird about it, but it's just like, yeah, like you kind of presented like a facade being a part of mom talk. And then when you got found out now, all of a sudden everything comes crumbling down. Um, I think the only thing for me that I feel like Taylor is guilty of is pretty much exposing everybody in a selfish way because I know the people don't see it for Whitney but I do think Whitney had a point last episode where she was like there was a different way that you could have did that uh, that um TikTok live that there was a tactful way you could have did that where it didn't harm everybody else and to me that's true like I remember that live I remember seeing clips of the live like Taylor really could have just been like look I know y'all seen this stuff on Reddit, but me and my husband, we do swing. It's consensual. Everyone's cool with it. And I caught feelings for somebody that he introduced to me. And now we're trying to figure out where do we go from here? You know, some friends introduced us to it. But saying that everyone's at fault, nobody's innocent, all of mom talk is like a part of it. It put targets on people's backs who probably or what didn't even know what was going on, you know, or maybe knew what was going on, but didn't partake into it and didn't even blow up your spot. You should have been mad at the girl who blew up your spot that was a part of it. But you ended up inadvertently hurting other people. And I feel like that is where I think she she has the most fault. But like the swinging thing, not so much when it was consensual and everyone agreed to it, you know. But because they live in Utah and they're Mormons, everyone's trying to like nail her to the cross. And it's just kind of like, like just because you didn't do it don't mean it was that bad. You know what I'm saying? So we then ended up seeing the rest of the OGs because remember the OGs is Taylor. Yeah, <laughs> I had to think about it. It's Taylor, um, Michaela, Macy, and Whitney. So we see Michaela, Macy, and Whitney going to like some coffee shop, sitting down to drink some like boba and stuff. And so they're sitting there and they're just kind of like, girl, we have to figure out how we get mom talk back because Taylor was the face of mom talk. It has really put like a negative like spotlight on them and their brand deals have kind of pretty much like stopped coming. And right now, all of these women are pretty much the breadwinners of their homes. And they're just like, we got to figure out, we got to do something, you know? And like I said, these girls are not friends, they're coworkers. Okay. And when one coworker messes up all, uh, messes up their money, they got to figure out a way to get it back. So, you know, Whitney is like, this is pretty much Taylor's fault. Like you got the swinging scandal. Then she had an affair. Now you getting arrested and nobody really wants to like give us products when it comes to mom talk. Like now, now we, now we struggling to get brand deals. You didn't have Macy being like, honestly, Taylor, she thinks with her vagina, like boys thinks with their dicks. Like, I don't get how she pregnant now. Why she pregnant now? Like I was shocked when I saw it. Whitney was like, I wasn't. I wasn't, it was just, and they're just like, she needs to slow down. So we end up finding out that Taylor is going to have this um, baby shower to invite all the girls because in the past 11 months, she really hasn't been talking to anybody other than Macy. And Whitney was just like, I don't really know if I'm gonna go. Like we not even cool like that, you know, but like, 
I'll think about it. But then they're kind of like, what should we do now with mom talk? And I think one of them was like, someone needs to now be like the face or needs to now start leading the girls in a different direction because we have to get away from the negative stuff that Taylor did so we can start getting more money or getting back to where we started getting money. And I don't fault them for that. Like Taylor went on and on about episode in episode one about how she's the face she created mom talk with you creating something that means you're the face of it correct and if you are the face of it you have more of a responsibility to keep yourself in line and keep your image clean so you don't screw everybody else over so you can't say like I created this and like y'all should be thanking me but then you created it and you screwed it up and now everyone's scrambling trying to figure out how they're gonna feed their family so we get to this next scene where it is a majority of the cast at Macy's house except what's her name except Jesse and Taylor and they're filming a TikTok one like please God make me famous it's like one of the audios and so they end up like in the kitchen and Demi ends up asking everybody like hey who is the breadwinner in their family? Are we all the breadwinners in our family? And at first, nobody wants to say anything. But then Macy was like, no, I think we all are the breadwinners in our family. I said, that would irritate me because I'm not about to coddle no man's ego or pride or feelings like that. If I'm in here making this money and you living off my money, then I'm going to let everybody know I'm the breadwinner. I'm not going to emasculate you, but I'm going to let everybody know. Because in all honesty, men who get like real like tense about that, I really do be feeling like you want to be the breadwinner to financially abuse somebody. Because if you if she's the breadwinner and you still get to do what you want, you still do, then what's the issue? What's the issue, okay? So um, next thing you know, uh, Macy ends up explaining to us that like her brand deals kind of like slowed up. Like they said in the beginning of the episode, you see that Macy's cue card has changed as well, where when we saw her first, she was 27. Now she's 28. And so she ends up being like, she didn't get a brand deal. I think like in like September, October, no, I think she said October, November and December, but now it's January and she's got like two or three and everyone's just like, yeah, they're all feeling the effects of like Taylor's arrest on their, you know, their money. So they end up going to sit down in the den and Whitney's like, I got something to tell (laughs) y'all. I got something to show y'all. I got something to tell y'all. So she ends up pulling out this box and it's a box full of bride baiters. And everyone's like, girl, what? What is this? They're all giggling and laughing. Whitney ends up explaining that like in the Mormon faith, like sex is very like you don't talk about it. You don't speak about it. Like you're supposed to be a virgin until you get married. But then once you get married, you're supposed to be a porn star. Like it's very like taboo thing to talk about. And she ends up telling them that like the brand is offering her a brand deal where she tells them that it's like for $20,000 and all she has to do is like take a picture with the the vibrator and I was like okay why are we asking I would do it you telling me I post one picture with a cute little caption and you on drop $20,000 in my bank account I'm doing it. I don't care what none of you girls got to say. I'm taking care of my family. You know what I'm saying? And so everybody is just like, I don't know. So I think Demi, Layla were like, I would do it. Like, I would do it. Then you had, uh, what's her name? Macy being like, it would have to be more than that. We end up finally, like, meeting Jen. Jen is 24. She lets us know she was the first Jen Affleck. Her um, husband, I think his, like, Jen, Ben Affleck is, like, her husband's second cousin. I don't I think second or third cousin. And she was like, we're trying to convert them. I think she meant it like jokingly or something like that. But she was like, they have the same like middle name. I don't know Jennifer Lopez's middle name, but I guess now you're the only Jen Affleck because they getting a divorce, (laughs) you know? So she's 24, but like, they're all like as much, she was being approved. Like she's being prudish. But then when they get to her, they're like, well, you're the one that's always taking videos for your husband. So it's like, why are we being approved about sex toys? But everyone knows you you get down and freaky. You know what I'm saying? Like you out here twerking, dancing, and you don't really have any qualms about your sexuality, but you're not going to post a picture for $20,000. You know, Jen said, I probably do it for 30. And then Macy is like, yeah, I would do it for 30. And I'm just kind of like, I don't care how much, but if someone was offering me $20,000 just to post a picture of me holding a vibrator, how do you want it? This, I don't, you know, I would do my best Vanna White. 
here you go. Like, like you just have to post one picture. That's like when what's her name? Kendall Jenner got $250,000 to post a picture about possibly going to Firefest. Girl, I'm doing whatever. <laughs> like, like, what do you mean? So Whitney is just kind of like, I don't know. Like, my family is very conservative. They're very, like, pulled up together. And she was like, I don't know how they would feel about me doing this. Are they paying your bills? Because if not, why does it matter? Okay. And so they end up all talking about how there's a lot of women who have never experienced like an orgasm. Like, and next thing you know, we end up meeting Layla because Layla raises her hand. She's like, you know, I'm 22 years old. I have two kids and I've never experienced an orgasm. I said, girl, 22, you got two kids and you never had an orgasm. Then what were y'all doing? (laughs) What were you doing? So she ends up being like, you know, they end up throwing her the vibrator and being like, girl, you need this more than any of us. And she's just like, well, I've, you know, done, you know, touched myself, but she's just kind of like, anytime I'm about to like climax, I get like, I get scared. I said, girl, what? Okay. Okay. And so we get a little bit of history about Layla. So Layla ended up, I guess her family ended up moving to like, you know, Utah, she went to pretty much a predominantly white school, a predominantly uh, Mormon school. And so to fit in, she decided to become Mormon and got baptized at the church when she was 16 years old. She said she never really like was bothered by the fact that she was black and in the church, but she definitely stuck out like a sore thumb. And she got married uh, right around the age of 19, but now she's divorced. You know, I said divorce with two kids. And Layla is definitely mixed because when we see her kids, we saw her son. I thought her son <laughs> was Whitney's child. And she, they were like, no, that's her kid. I said, oh, yeah, you're definitely mixed, sis. So she's just like, yeah. And they're all like, well, girl, once you start touching yourself and you you have that moment, you not going to, you going to hit puberty. You're not going to want to stop. And Macy was like, I'm selfish. Like I'm going to get mine. I said, as you should, Macy, get yours. Okay. Get yours. So when they talk to Jen and they're all like, who's more comfortable about their sexuality, they're all looking at Jen and just like, well, you know, I do a little dance and I do a little whoop de whoop. And Demi ends up saying, well, Jen is the one that encouraged me to start like taking pictures of myself, basically like nudes or like sexy pictures. And she was showing Demi was like y'all want to see him she shows one picture where she's like in a swimsuit or I think that's Demi. it looked like it looks like Jen but I think that's Demi but she has on like a crown she's in like this cute little like um jewel encrusted like swimsuit kind of thing but then I think she ended up showing her nudes because she is like spread desert eagle you know and they're like oh my god you all in your glory Demi but Whitney is like I think these conversations are important because we're taught to like shy away from them and not speak about it but I want to be able to like empower like the new generation of like moms coming up and girls so that they don't feel uncomfortable about these types of things which I mean do you girl empower the children y'all this next scene I cackled like (laughs) again like I said Taylor's parents are so hilariously blunt and rude that it it is funny as hell to me because they when I tell you they are tired they are tired tired of the promises baby tired they are tired of her they're tired of taylor and they cannot stand dakota so they pull up to taylor's um house the mom comes in the dad comes the dad already got an attitude because he's sitting at the kitchen table like why am i here your mama done pulled me off my job site why am i here (laughs) i said (laughs) and so taylor's looking at her mom like you didn't tell him and she's like no i i'm gonna let you tell him And she ends up telling her dad that Dakota is moving into her place. And the daddy is like, when? And she's like, like today. And he's like, right now. And she's like, um, 
I, I, I don't know yet. He's on his way. And the dad's like, are you serious, Taylor? And Taylor's like, yeah, well, like, I, you know, I'm with somebody who we want to be together. And, like, you know, I don't want to, like, raise this kid by myself. And she's like, is that what y'all want me to do? And the mom is like, pretty much, yeah. <clears throat> she's like, we taught you that you should get married and find, like, a find a person to have, like, a covenant with and all of that stuff. But that's not the case. You already divorced you know and like at this point you just need to be by yourself and, and and then find yourself you know be by yourself find yourself then get with somebody and she's like well he's moving in and the dad was like I the dad basically said you're not about to have a, a, a I don't want ro a revolving door of men attached to my daughter nor to my grandkids so this better work I said oh girl your daddy tired. Your dad tired. Your daddy is tired. So Dakota pulls up. He pulls up and the daddy is immediately irritated. Immediately irritated. He even told before Dakota got there, he even told Taylor, like, you wouldn't be in this mess pretty much if you didn't get pregnant. Cause didn't nobody tell you to go out there and get pregnant after a divorce. And she was like, Well, I said, dang, daddy. I said, shh. Dang. So Dakota pulls up. He's his age has also changed. When we first saw him, he was 30. Now he's 31. He goes out. Um, she goes outside to help him like move boxes into the house. And she's like, you know, I just told him that you're moving in. And he was like, like right now. And she she's like, Yeah. And he's like, yo, they're gonna hate me. They're gonna hate me. And so he walks into the house. And the mom is like, should we go out there and help him? The daddy said, for what? He ain't got nothing. No couch, no furniture. <laughs> he ain't got nothing. The daddy was like, he ain't got nothing. No couch, no furniture, no nothing. All he got is like three boxes. Well, what am I help with that? And she's like, well, no, maybe we should really ask them to be like, hey, do you really need help? And so they start screaming outside, like, do y'all need help? And they're like, no, we ain't got that much stuff. So then Dakota tries to come in and try to be like all jokey jokey. He's like, hey, what's up? And then the daddy immediately is like, is this what you do? You get women pregnant and move into their house with nothing? I said, ooh. <laughs> I said, sir. I said, get off the gas a little bit. I think the dad's name is like Jeremy. Get off the gas, Jeremy. It's just just a little bit. Cause you you pushing it hard. Hard right now. And then the mom chimes in and is like, Yeah, is this what you do? Is this what you I said, ooh, girl. And so he's like, No, like this ain't how I wanted it to go, but like we here now. <laughs> you know, we we here now. So they all end up sitting at the kitchen table and Taylor ends up being like, Well, you know, like me and Dakota's like values align. I said, Do they really? Do they really? She was like, even though we don't really follow them, our values align. I said, so then are they really values and beliefs if you don't follow them or you don't adhere to them? I said, girl, you're not making your case any better in front of your parents. You're just not. I said, girl, this is, this is, this is bad. <laughs> this is bad. So we move on from that scene and we end up seeing Macy and, um, Taylor meet up. They're at this like botanical garden and, um, Taylor's trying to get a few plants that she wants to be at her baby shower. We find out she's having it at this place called like, uh, the white Santi, is it Santi? Shanty? I don't know. That's an ugly name, <laughs> but She's having it at this establishment and she is inviting all the girls and she's hoping everybody comes. And so they're walking around. Macy is like, oh my gosh, like you don't even look that big pregnant. And they're just like laughing. It's good for them to catch up because they haven't seen each other because Taylor pretty much says that like she distanced herself once she got arrested. Like once the arrest, once the video came out of her walking out of the police department, like she just was like, it was too much for her. It was too much. So she ended up saying she's actually kind of like scared to see the other women because she's just like she don't know what type of energy or time they about to be on and she just she's not sure she's not sure so then 
um, Macy ends up saying, like, honestly, I felt bad for you. Like, everybody was coming at your throat, coming at your neck, talking mad, greasy to you. And I was just like, give her some compassion. Like, she was like, I was actually really worried about your mental state because I was just like, that's a lot to take on. Like, the swinging scandal, the affair, the divorce. Now, you know, you had the miscarriage, you get arrested, and now probation. And now, and now you're pregnant again. Like, that's a lot to take on. So she was like, I really wished everybody would have gave you more grace and more compassion. And I, it just, it hurts, you know, it just hurts seeing you go through that. So they end up walking around the place and they get to this one location and Macy starts to spill tea that she really don't like Dakota. And she basically tells, um, Taylor, cause honestly, Taylor doesn't like the fact that everyone t is telling her to be a single mom. And I'm actually surprised that they're telling her to be a single mom because in their community, that's like a no, no. But that to me lets me know that Dakota is really somebody she shouldn't be around because I'm like, are we not taking it? I don't know why Taylor's not taking into consideration that he was moving into your house with nothing but boxes like the daddy said he ain't got no furniture no tv no nothing so he doesn't have money or anything to help really sustain you you're gonna have him around your other children and I don't know how cool the other daddy is about you know your ex-husband is about that and if I was him I don't know if I would want Dakota around my kids I say he's a recovering drug addict or it might still be on drugs like he doesn't have anything and to me Dakota seems like a user like he seems like he saw a, a lick he saw that Taylor was you know in a bad way she liked him a little bit and he said you know what I'm about to hitch my wagon to hers because we know she getting paid off of TikTok and she's somewhat famous and probably is famous in the community so bam here you go because I really think that's what's happening because Macy ends up telling us that there was an event that they were all at and Taylor's ex came into the event next thing you know Dakota lost his you know what basically calling her a slut a liar a whore and everything and I'm like hey you still want to be with him and Taylor's just like yeah that wasn't his best moment but you know we're in a better place is like he and um Macy is like I haven't seen no change in him and we also find out out of all of the girls Macy and Taylor are the only two that really like Macy is the only one that's really kept in touch with Taylor. So she's just like, Taylor has kind of lessened the things that she has told me about their situation, but it's not anything positive. Their relationship is really toxic and I don't think she should be with him. Like when I tell you she was in that confessional being like, he's insecure. He's not a good dude to be around. And I don't like the way that he talks to her and I wish she would just leave him alone. And Macy is just kind of like, I think you should raise this child by yourself because Taylor is just like, are you saying that I should be by myself? And she's like, yeah, and I was with Macy, like this man flipped out so badly when he saw your ex-husband that he then returned, called you a whore, a slut and a liar because your ex-husband showed up to an event that he was more than likely probably invited to. And he's probably insecure because maybe your ex-husband maybe looked better than him or got, got money, you know, but it's just kind of like you are, you're having a baby with a loser. It seems because I, any man that gets that, like, like you not talking to me like that. You're just not, you're just not. And the way my mouth is set up, I'll, I'll get real nasty. Cause we would have been arguing it. I would have made a scene. <laughs> I would have made it. I would have called that man everything but a child of God and then some. <laughs> so, no, ma'am. So, Taylor ends up saying in her confessional that it's just really hard for her to hear this from Macy because she does value her friend's opinions. But at this point, it is what it is. The thing we get is of Whitney going home to her mom's house. We end up seeing her younger sister who is in high school and her mom. And Whitney ends up asking them, like, what do you guys think about me doing a um, sex toy deal? And the, the mom is like, what? And the sister is like, does that really go with your brand? Like mom, 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 vibrance. <laughs> and I, I giggled at that. And she was like, yeah, cause she, cause Whitney is like, I feel like I could talk about it in a empowering type of way. And so the mom is just like, well, why do you need to talk about it? Why is that important? She was like, well, honestly, you didn't have these conversations with me and I wish I would have it 
uh, like she was like she, the mom was basically saying how was that empowering to talk about like your like sex positivity like your sexuality and everything and she's like because when I got married I wish you would have had that conversation with me like I went into my wedding night blind she was like we're supposed to be virgins when we get married but she was like when it happened with between me and my husband she was like it was a bloodbath like it was a horror movie and then she was like not really a horror movie but a comedy no girl I bet you it was a horror movie so she's like so then they ask her in the confessional like did you guys ever have like such like such education or sex ed and she was like no she um Whitney ends up being like honestly when I was watch movies and watch the teachers put like teach the students how to put condoms on a banana that was foreign to me because we like we didn't do that here like she's like in the church it's like when you talk about sex it's like it's wrong it's wrong it's wrong it's wrong it's wrong and then when you get married it's supposed to be like oh it's great so she ends up saying that there was a bible quote that they taught them that compared sex to murder I said in what world and what, and what the Lord said, be fruitful and multiply. And what, and maybe it's just because I went to a pretty like progressive church, like, and yeah, it was to be a all like, a, it was an all black church, but like it was in Virginia, it's in the South. Like we had sex, like Ed talks at church. Like we had like the, um, HIV and AIDS, like, people come and speak to the kids and speak to the community. We had like blood drop, like we had all these things at my church and they did preach like abstinence, but they also, um, preach like keeping yourself safe. Like, you know, this is what a condom is. This is what birth control is. Like, this is how you spot an STD. This is how you spot an STI. It's important for you to get tested. Like they really did promote like, you know, being healthy all the way around especially when we would have like health drives it would be like every like every disease you could think of you know diabetes like um heart disease you know breast cancer cancer you know it's like they really educated like the community like and that's honestly what I believe a church is supposed to do like if you believe in the word of God teach everybody the word of God, you know, that is receptive to you. But also you should be helping further your community's knowledge as well. And having those type of health drive, blood drives, like educating people on these types of things, because we know sex happens. Teach your kids. And even in high school, like we had sex ed and and PE, I think it was like maybe three weeks long, maybe, maybe or maybe a month long and like we they, the the same message was pushed you know like this is what a condom is this is what a female condom is this is what birth control is this is what a std is this was an sti you know they preached abstinence to us but they also was like we know y'all be getting down so protect yourself and i don't get why you can't just teach people that You know, so Whitney was like in the back of your mind while you're having sex, you're thinking about that Bible quote. And I said, I ain't never heard of no Bible verse that said sex is like death. I don't know what you're reading. (laughs) I don't know what you're reading. So her mom was like, well, you know, I had a baby, a toddler when you got married. So I really didn't have time to have that conversation with you, but I wish I did. And I'm like, there was time for you to have that conversation. Like you, you had a baby. You could have explained to me how you get that baby. So, so what we talked about? So she pretty much, Whitney pretty much said, I'm going to do it. I said, as you should, because my thing is like, if you, if you, if if you're not paying my bills and what I'm doing is not hurting anybody, I'm doing it. What? So we end up seeing Taylor and Dakota go to this restaurant, um, to get lunch or whatever. And he asked her, so how was like, what's up, what's up with the baby shower? Is all the girls from mom top coming? And Taylor is like, I don't know, but I hope so. But she was like, honestly, I need more friends because of this whole entire situation. A lot of people that I was close to pushed away from me and it really hurts. So now I'm trying to get back into this circle. And so Dakota ends up being like, well, how was your talk with Macy? Was she talking shit? And she was like, Taylor's like, no. She was like, out of everybody, Macy is the one that I confided in the most. And Taylor's like, no, she's petty. She, she'll post a picture of me and uh, me and you, and she won't even like it. Okay. He was like, that's weird. No, it's not. If I don't like what I'm seeing, why I'm going, why am I going to like it? I don't like you. <laughs> what? I don't like you. What are you? That's not weird. That's fake. If I like the picture and I don't like you. And he don't like Macy because Macy be Macy clocking his, you know what? Macy clocked his tea that he he's trash <laughs> and she she be telling Taylor that he is trash and he don't like it. 
Still can't believe that girl compared that man to Jake Gyllenhaal. Blasphemy. <laughs> Rock. And so Taylor's just like, I'm just nervous about friends. Like, I just want to make sure that, like, I have a community around me because the people that I thought were my friends pushed me to the side. So now Taylor is trying to be more open to the group. We then get this scene of Layla, her son, and uh, Whitney, and her daughter. Honestly, they needed to get control of their kids. They was doing too much in that, that Himalayan salt situation. Like, they throwing sand, they touching lights, they touching thermometers. I Get somewhere and sit down. Get somewhere and sit down. So while they're sitting there, Layla is, like, looking at the kids, but she's not saying nothing. I'm like, Layla, if you don't raise your voice and tell them to sit down. Or, like, I'm I'm so irritated. Whitney not even paying attention to her, her child. And I'm like, if you don't get one of these kids and tell, sit down. Because why are y'all messing up these people's establishment, going out here embarrassing me? So they sit down and they're having this conversation where Whitney pretty much says that she don't think she going to the baby shower. And Layla's like, why not? And Whitney is like, me and Taylor are not friends like that. She was like, we like everyone thinks that we're friends because we communicate with each other on mom talk and stuff. But honestly, we are not friends. And I don't think she even going to be worried about me not being there. And Layla says in her confessional, this is typical Whitney. She has issues with somebody, but she doesn't confront them. She just like ignores them or act like they're not there and distance herself and she's like you should come because we're all supposed to be like supporting um supporting Taylor in this moment and Whitney's like no Taylor's selfish like we've been there for her throughout everything but she ain't really been there for anybody else like you got the DUI you got not the DUI you got the swinger scandal the affair the arrest now you pregnant again like it's too much and I'm tired of I don't want to be associated with her she was like I don't feel safe around her and Whitney has been like for the past two episodes I kept saying I don't feel safe around her she really screwed her friends who were supposed to be her best friends over like she really threw them under the bus like and I'm tired of walking around on eggshells with her and being afraid of her following and I'm just tired of it and that's interesting because it's like a lot of people do do that in those like influencers communities where they be friends with people even though they're not like they don't really like them because they're worried about the backlash of how their followers were act towards them but Whitney is like me and her are not friends and I'm sick of being scared of like how many followers she has and how they'll attack me it is what it is you know what I'm saying I'm over it I'm over her and I'm over it over it I'm not going so it is the day of the baby shower and the event space is nice, but the decor was so bland. And maybe it's because when I go to baby showers, I'm used to, like, color. Like, the last baby shower I went was, like, safari theme. So it was, like, a lot of greens, orange, brown, and black. And, like, they had animals everywhere. Like, this didn't even give very much, like, baby shower. to If, if, if Taylor wasn't pregnant, I would have thought it was, like, an engagement party or something. Like, I was just like, mm, this is kind of kind of lame, girl. So the girls get there. Macy is messy. Macy is messy. But I'm kind of here for it. So she's sitting at the table. We find out that they're playing that game where you measure, like, out of, like, a piece of ribbon or, like, string. And you put it, like, you guesstimate how big you think um, the person's belly is. And if you get it, like, exactly right or close to it compared to everybody else, you get a um, you get a prize. You get a prize. So as um, Dakota is walking around explaining the rules of the game to everyone and checking everybody's ribbon, Macy is telling the girls about why she don't like Dakota, why she don't see it for him. And she's reiterating that story about how Taylor's ex pulled up to a, an event that we were all at. and He was calling her a whore, a slut, and everything but a child of God. And everybody at the table was like, he really did that? So I guess they weren't there either. And so then things got a little awkward and a little catch and go because Dakota walked up behind them and everyone got quiet. And then <laughs> everyone was like, Ooh, let's get away from this table. Cause Demi ends up getting up. So then everybody else get, ends up getting up. And someone was like, Ooh, that was close. That was close. So the girls end up huddling. Taylor is walking around the party, mingling, taking pictures with everybody. And, um, and I will say this when Dakota was like, I'm gonna put my hand on your belly. Cause you know, that's, that's, that's what I like to do. I said, why are you telling us? He's, he feels performative. He feels performative as well. Like Whitney feels performative to me. So the girls are in this huddle and they're talking and they're like, where's Whitney? And Layla was like, Whitney not coming. And Jess is like, does, why not? Does, 
this Taylor know? And Layla's like, no, uh, Whitney basically says she's not coming because her and Taylor aren't friends like that. And she also doesn't feel like Taylor would notice if she's not there. So the next thing you know, Taylor pulls up and they're like, uh, she's like, hey, I want to take pictures with you guys. And before they all can get in, like into like a, like a cute little huddle, like not a huddle, but like, you know, like stand in line to take the pictures. She's like, where's Whitney? And Macy is like, oh, Whitney not coming. I said, you are messy boots. And um, she's like, why not? And Layla looks guilty. So Taylor's like, Layla, you are not good at lying. So what's what's up? Tell me, tell me what it is. And Layla's like, I don't really want to be a part of this. And they're like, girl, just tell us what it is. So she's like, Whitney and I went out and she says that y'all not friends like that. And you probably wouldn't care if she wasn't there. Like you wouldn't notice. So she not coming. And Taylor's like, that's news to me. That, like, we not friends like that. But then I'm like, well, Taylor, in the beginning of the episode, you said that y'all, like, you distance yourself from everybody. So, and it's been 11 months. She probably don't see you as a friend. But y'all not really friends. None of y'all are. Y'all are coworkers. Like, I keep saying. So, Taylor's like, oh, okay. So, then we have Demi in the confessional being, like, the tension between Taylor and um, Whitney is very palpable. Like, you can tell that they got beef and they got issues. And, honestly, I think it stems from Whitney not wanting to be in Taylor's shadow anymore or feeling like she's not going to be Taylor's lackey because they keep showing this one clip of when the girls are, like, dancing and Taylor's always in the front when they're, like, in that all black doing the TikTok. And I think Whitney is like, girl, we're basically the same age I'm 30 you're 29 like I'm nobody's minion I'm nobody's lackey lackey I'm gonna start carving a path for myself like I'm not I don't want to be attached to you anymore and to me that's her right to do so she definitely could have gave a text to Taylor be like hey thanks for the invite but where our friendship stands now I don't think I'm going to be attending but I wish you the best and I wish you to have a great part. Like that would have been better than just not showing up because y'all do have some type of rapport and some type of relationship. So Taylor walks off and her mom is like, what's wrong? Cause she could tell that she's kind of irritated and she's like, Whitney's not coming. And she was basically like, um, she thinks I wouldn't have noticed that she wouldn't be there. And her mom's like, what do you mean? She was like, she said, she said she she was basically saying like she didn't think I would notice. And the mom is like, mm. so then her mama, I guess, got into like mama bear mode. Cause even though her mom seems like a hard ass, it does seem like she does love her daughter. Because if they always picking up the pieces when everything falls apart, you could tell that she loves her child. She grabbed her phone, hit the Whitney. <laughs> when I tell you, she was like, Whitney, why you not here? When I tell you I screamed. I said, nah, she called Whitney. And Whitney's like, um, hello? She was like, yeah, it's, you know, it's, Le I think the lady's name is like Linda or something. She was like, it's Taylor's mom. Why, why aren't you not at the, the baby shower? And Whitney was like, um, I just decided not to come. And this is a conversation that I need to have with your daughter, not you. And I didn't, I wasn't bothered by Whitney's response. Because at the end of the day, Whitney is th a 30 year old married woman with two kids. I don't care about, like, I, I wouldn't care about her mama's opinion I'd have been like yeah this is a conversation I need to have with your daughter not you and your daughter's an adult that's about to have three kids now so she could call me if she really got beef <laughs> you know but I mean I didn't fault the mom I also didn't fault Whitney so you then see Macy being like oh my gosh yo Taylor's mom just called Whitney and everyone's at the table like <laughs> like no she didn't I said messy messy <laughs> y'all that is it that is all as always remember to be bravely authentic and definitely hop down in the comments below and share your thoughts with me on this episode and i'm out y'all deuces <laughs>